organization aimed at developing the black community to its maximum potential through a focus on education and economics with a trace of hard work, honesty, and integrity. For more information, make sure you visit www.pactsinc.org. That way you can visit, visit the website, learn more about the organization as a whole, the codes of conduct, the, becoming a member of PAX Inc., donating to PAX Inc., how to get involved with the missions that PAX Inc. have going on, and also explore the Learning Center so you can learn more about black history uh, throughout the world because PAX Inc. should be putting it down. That's P-A-C-T-S-I-N-C dot org. Make sure you also visit the Freedom Train website. That's www.freedomtrainradio.com. That way you can learn more about myself, Joseph Ward, learn more about Patrick, Jamie, and everybody else and all the new shows that's on the Freedom Train website that's going on right now. Remember, we have the Freedom Train podcast series, the one, the home show, the title show that started it all. We have the Fix Sports Podcast, which is my show, which is the blackest and the realest sports podcast you've ever heard. We have Lessons from the Screen, which is Patrick's show where he breaks down documentaries, documents, um, movies, TV shows, YouTube channels, anything that's on the screen that you can get information from, Patrick going to break it down. And now on Wednesdays at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch Office Hours with Professor Carl Tone Jones and Erica Topol live from the Freedom Train website at www.freedomtrainradio.com. Pat. What up? I said a whole lot. Yes, you did. But you said it quickly. <laughs> Hey, hey, listen to the Bone Thug albums really help. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how my levels? Nah, you good, man. You sound good. You sound good. All right, cool. Last yeah, show, you know, I want to apologize. Realize I was a little low when we had the ladies on from Tea Time Black Women Talk. So make sure our levels are good. Right, right, right. So, so we wanted so, to let y'all hear it so that y'all knew that we were making corrections intentionally. Right. Right, we noted, we noted, we had noted it and fixed it. So that's what we are. So man, what we got on the table for the day, man? What we got for the day on the on the, on the train? So today we have an interesting topic. Uh-huh. Amid a week of interesting topics, uh-huh. uh, we felt like this one was the most important in terms of our community uh-huh. sticking together and staying together and all that. So everybody knows. Uh, when, you know, Alabama had a special election earlier uh, this year, this month, actually, yeah. or la- was it last month? Hold on, before, uh, not to cut you off, my bad. Go ahead. I don't think a lot of people know it's a special election. Could you break down why it was a special election? Of course, of course, of course. So, you have a special election whenever the person that is in a seat either resigns or moves to another position, which is essentially the same as resigning. So in this case, uh, Jeff Sessions was the senator for Alabama. He was one of the representatives in the Senate for Alabama, the state of Alabama. He got tapped by Donald Trump to serve as the U.S. Attorney General, and so he resigned from his position in the Senate in order to serve as the U.S. Attorney General, which left the opening in the Senate for a representative from his area of Alabama to fill. So they had a special election that happened earlier this month, I believe it was December 12th, to fill that hole. Uh, And so when a special election occurs, the person that's voted in is not serving a full term. They are serving the remainder 
of the term of the person that was elected. So Jeff Sessions' term was slated to end January 3rd, 2021. So now the winner of this special election, Doug Jones, his term is going to end January 3rd, 2021. Did I say 2001 the first time? I jacked that up. My fault. Right. Anyway. So, so that's the special election. They had the special election December 12th. Uh, Doug Jones won by a small margin, um, the mar a margin of, I believe, one and a half percent. Uh, was, you know, basically 20, 21,000 votes if we round up with over a million people voting. And so, you know, that was that was an okay thing considering what happened and what Roy Moore represented. But then after the election, something interesting happened. Right. This narrative was presented that black people has saved us all, which is how the narrative initially what? came out, was that we all need to thank black people. Okay. Somewhere over the course of a week, that narrative yeah, changed changed. from we need to thank black people to we need to thank black women. And mm -hmm. now while we don't have a problem with that message inherently, the problem comes in when you have black women now writing articles all over the internet. Oh yeah, that root and article. attacking black men. Right. Yeah, that article on the root. We got to talk about that. We got to talk about that article on the root because that was uncalled for. It's like because if you don't know about that article, and um, uh, I'm a I'm a um, where did we post that article? Where did we post it? I forgot where we posted it. We we're trying we to find it. We posted it in the line group. I don't know that we posted it on. Okay, let me go try to find that article. But the the problem with the article is, it's it's basically saying that black men don't deserve black women, and they based that off of this election and some other things where they felt like politically that black women were in the right and everybody else was in the wrong and, and the, it, things didn't work out in black women's favor and if everybody would just listen to black women it would work out in black women's favor. Now, we understand that this isn't the voice and the tone of all black women. This is a selected group of black women who are saying this. But the problem when you are saying, hey, we saved y'all asses again. Hold on. Time out. I thought black people been saving ourselves. And if anybody could save, I thought black people as a whole been working together to save ourselves. Like, I didn't know we was in the competition. Matter of fact, we're not in competition. So w what is all this coming from? Why are we here? Because this this type of mindset and rhetoric really not going to help us get to where we need to go. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, you know, we got to, because we, we have to stop. And what, like I keep saying, and I've been saying this for the whole week we've been talking about it, my biggest issue with this is that it's not our narrative. You know, right. it's a narrative that some white people came up with. We picked it up and ran with it, and now there are sections of our community using this narrative to further divide our community, and it's not our narrative. So, you know, it's it's, it's like falling right into the trap of somebody that doesn't have your best interests at heart to begin with, you know, and then I begin to wonder about our ability to really discern accurate inform how to read information accurately because a lot of the things that are being used to support this narrative don't really support the narrative. Yeah, I found it. It was written by Ashley and Cotty. Y'all don't deserve black women. But but see, the thing is, like, <clears throat> before we even get to, into the article, let's look into these, let's look at these numbers and really, really break down what happened in this election so we can really understand how politics and voting in elections work across the board. Because I don't think we really understand because if your narrative is, hey, we saved the day because we had 98% of the vote, that means you really don't understand what's going on because as of now, like the final numbers, 28% of white men, 28% of the, of the white men who voted 
voted, I mean, 26% of the white men who voted, voted for Doug Jones. So if, if 16% of the white men would have voted for Doug Jones, Roy Moore would have won. Even with, even at 98% of black women voting. Like that's just how close this race was. Like this, like the 98 helped greatly. The 93, but think about it, like 93% of black men and 98% of black women voted for Doug Jones and Doug Jones still barely won. Think about that. So what it means is it takes a total collective effort of all the voters. That That's not discounting anybody of anything. Hey, 17% of the voters were black women, and out of, seven, out of that 17%, 98% of that black, of those black women voted for Doug Jones and didn't vote, vote for, for Roy Moore so fast. Kudos for those women for doing that, but this is not a competition. But even at the end of the day, 100% of the black women could have voted for Doug Jones, and it would have still been a close victory. Matter of fact, 100% of black women could have voted for Doug Jones. 100% of that 17% of black women and 100% of that 11% of black men could have voted for Doug Jones. And if the percentage of white men and the percentage of white women didn't vote for Doug Jones, Roy Moore would have won that Senate because it takes a collective effort. But let's, because even if you want to talk about controlling the margins, which, you know, a lot of people do talk about that, I want to go into those numbers you just mentioned because the 17% is not the number that's being utilized. The 98% is, and that's what leads me to believe that we really aren't understanding the numbers. That 98% means out of all of the, out of all of the black women that voted, 98% of them voted for Doug Jones. That right. doesn't mean that 98% uh, of black women voted. That's what yeah, that's, that that's how the narrative is being spent. That 98% of total black women in the world or in Alabama voted for Doug Jones. That's not true. Yeah, and and I've even seen some articles where it suggested that 98% of Doug Jones votes came from black women. Like most most of Doug Jones voters were white men. I mean, most of the voters, period, um, excuse me for this, for this race, 35% of the voters were white men. 31% of the voters were white women. 11% were black men and 17% were black women. So you do the, 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 the breakdown of that is, too, like you just said, if anybody had to change their vote, you know, if all of those people that wrote in, because they had 22,000 write-ins, if Some all of those write-ins. write-ins were for Roy Moore, Doug Jones would have lost. Right. You know, like, so, you know, you get into that, but for me, again, it's just the narrative. Why do, you, why do these people feel the need to create division, to attack their brothers, their husbands, their fathers? Why do they feel the need to attack us? And, like, this, this statistic that you're using to attack us is not even, the statistic doesn't even agree with your argument because it has nothing to do with the point you're trying to make. I just don't understand where this division, well, we need to do something about this it's, need that some people have to attack but it's, it, other to people. Me, to me, it's, it's, I mean, I mean, state state this again. Not all black women, but those black women who have this mindset of we black women are carrying the nation and carrying the world. That first of all, that's not true. Stop. Show me one point in one time in American history where black women endured anything that white supremacists had to throw at us alone. Show me that time where black women had to endure it alone. Now your your. The, 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 the things that black women face may have been different from black men, but you didn't go through the bullshit alone. You, that just didn't happen. Black men, it has never been a time in American history where black men has had it easy. Matter of fact, we can, we can and it's not to get no tit for tat, but we can say in some respects, in some regards, in some instances, black men have had it worse. You can. 
And the same, we can say the same thing for black women. We can say the same thing for both sides. There's differences, but nobody's been alone in this fuckery dealing with white supremacy. Nobody's been alone. So to to go about it with the mindset of, hey, well, we're carrying America on our back because we're the only ones with the moral compass in America. That's straight bull. Like, and you can't, you can't, you're not serious about making change because it's, that you have a us against the world mentality and nobody's against you. Nobody's even thinking about you like that, but it's, it's almost like you, they're, they're drumming up certain things into, into, and being divisive against us as black men and turning us out as if we're enemies. And we're not enemies against black women. We're here to, we're here to fight and stand with black women. But there's certain black women and who have these mindsets that are not healthy. And we can't admit, and we talk about it all the time, but that's not our focus today. But there are some black women, some black men. You see how we tore into Damon when he said that stuff about black men? You see how we tore into Damon. So we, we, we get like that, but we got to stop this as if we're trying to win. There's no competition between black men and black women. We're working together. We're all losing together. So we're trying to win together. So I don't get this. Right. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. And you always see it. And like you said, um, we we this show in particular. You know, we we we've had shows where we tore into the men. Actually, I yeah. think we've had more shows, shows where we, we tore did more. We did more towards the men. men because we are men, so we should tear the men more. But you know, at the same time, you know, we at some point, enough is enough. You you got to stop. We have to address the other side of the aisle, especially when the other side of the aisle is able to put out these sorts of materials. Which is um, damaging. Yeah, extremely damaging. I mean, because, you know, at one, first we had the uh, black, women, black men or the black men or the, or the white men or the black yeah. community, and that was written by a dude, and we ripped his ass. And, and then, then we, we had, became terrorists. And then, right, then we became terrorists. Um and now we're essentially not pulling our weight. Then you, not to uh, a, a few months uh, earlier into this year, you had a thing where the women were holding signs. You had black women holding signs over a bridge in Atlanta or something. And then, oh, that might have been last year. But then, like, you just keep having all of these instances pop up where it seems like black, black women have created an enemy so. out of black men. Hey, More so hey. than they've created an enemy out right. of white supremacy. Let me read. I got to read this. This is some of that root article. Let me read this. One thing is certain. Y'all don't deserve black women. On Tuesday, the Alabama Senate race took place. Roy Moore, a repugnant, alleged serious child molester who believes that women should not have the right to vote, civil rights should be scraped, and slavery was lit, lost by a hair. I mean, that right there... Lost by a hair right there to let you know right there that not but not I. Right. Doug Jones Moore's opponent was carried to victory by black folks, which is a mistake by black folk right there. Specifically black women. Exit polls show that ninety eight percent of black women voted for Jones as compared to ninety three percent of black men. Thirty five percent of white women, twenty seven percent of white men. Listen closely. Do you hear it? That my friends, the sound of hundreds upon thousands of black women let out letting out a resounding we tried to tell y'all. Every time there's something good in this world, know that black women probably did it first, said it first, seen it first. Someone was so sure about this that they put it on a t-shirt. Conversely, most negative things in this world black women tried to save you from. How, how did hundreds of thousands of women try to, like, come, try to let us, we tried to, like, what, 17% of black women showed up to vote. 17%. Seventeen percent of the voters that showed up were black women. That's third place. That ain't hundreds of thousands. No, it's, it's definitely not. It's definitely. But everything about that, because she mentions the percentage of the people that turned out that voted for particular candidates, but she never mentions the actual percentage of people that turned out. And that's why right. I said before, right. like that seventeen percent number is nowhere in that article. Right, nowhere. but see, that's the thing. The difference there's a, there's a distinct difference between that ninety eight percent of the voters voting for Jones and seventeen percent of those voters being black women. Because basically, what happened was 
not all all but two percent of that seventeen percent voted for Doug Jones. That's what that is saying. All of all but that and almost seventeen almost a whole seventeen percent of black women who showed up to vote voted for Doug Jones. Now, in conjunction with the eleven but ninety three percent of the eleven percent of black men, thirty four percent and thirty one percent of white women, and twenty six percent of thirty five percent of white men. It took that collective effort. It took that collective effort to win. It really took that. It, it wasn't. It wasn't that the ninety-eight percent put Jones over the top. That ninety-eight percent was a solid. That was a key point. But it didn't. It didn't secure the victory. The total number secured the victory. And this is not a competition. Well, I think that's the point that. that you know, to to hard for him because, you know, I I don't think there are too many different ways we can say that this was not a victory for black women solely. Nor was it a victory for black men or for black people solely. And again, we get back to the point you made earlier. We've always been in this struggle together. The things we've gone through have been different. I'm not going to sit here and say one person, one gender had it worse than the other because I don't I wouldn't want to trade the abuse that any gender had for the abuses of the opposite gender. Right. You know, I I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, because honestly I wouldn't want to experience any of it. Even to this day right now, I don't enjoy being a black man in America. I don't but I don't want to put being a black man on Ameri- in America on any black woman Similarly, I look at what our black women have to go through, and I don't want that either. It's it's different, but it's not to say one is worse than the other, and we got to get out of this, like you said. Why are we competing with each other? That's something my mom used to ask, um, ask us all the time when we used to have these things, these situations as a kid. Why are y'all competing to see who has it the worst? What kind right. of competi- What kind of sick mentality do right. you have? To get into a competition to of see who, who has the worst. the worst life. Right. Because it, cause the mentality is if you have it the worst, then you the realest. That's stupid. That is extremely dumb. That's, That's stupid. super dumb. That's extra super dumb. But it's like, it's like in this, black people showed up and helped Roy Moore, I mean, helped Doug Jones win. Black people did show up to help Doug Jones win. And now the thing is accountability. So are black people going to be in the in the process of the mind state, the notion? Are black people in, even in the position to hold Doug Jones accountable for his actions? No. Because now we got we got. So let's look let's look a little bit into Doug Jones and see what Doug, Doug Jones is about. Because we don't. But like, I'm just I'm be real. I don't know much about Doug Jones. All all I know is he's the dude that's running against the white dude who be touching on little girls. Bruh, we ain't in no position to hold Doug Jones accountable. I'd be willing to bet most of us didn't know who Doug Jones was before this. Most some some of us probably still don't know who Doug Jones is, other than you know because we still call him the 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 dude that beat Roy Moore. Like, we know Roy Moore now, and it, let's be honest again. It ain't like people was voting for Doug Jones. They was they voting, was voting against, against Roy Moore. Roy Moore, yeah. Right, right. So, so, but that's why, you know, when you see black people all embracing Doug Jones and <clears throat> jumping uh, with him in Jubilee and all harmoniously, and all, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who the fuck is Doug uh, Jones? Like, who? Now, his claim to fame for the black community is the, the trial, right? Yeah. So get what what's what's some information help give us some more information on that please. Alright, so back in uh nineteen sixty five there was uh all most of us know about the sixteenth Street Baptist Church bombing. Um that and that's the four. Back, that's the four girls in the church. In the church, right? Right, right, right. Because most people know about that. The four girls in the church. The four girl, right? That's the four girls in the church. So um, the the four black girls in the church. Most of us know about that. The the it, it injured twenty two people, 
there were four black girls killed in the church, and those four black girls have become famous. They become symbols. They become icons and, and, and memorials Artists, within the community. Right. That was in the 1963. In 1965, the FBI finished their investigation into the bombing and determined that four known Ku Klux, Klu Klux Klan members were guilty of it. So in 1977, one of them was tried and convicted of first-degree murder. And then in 2000, they uh, retried two of the other guys, and Doug Jones was the prosecutor that was appointed to a, uh, to try them in the case. So that was in 2000, and then in 2001, one of them received the life sentence, and in 2002, the other one received the life sentence. Now, the fourth Klan's member died in 1994. He was never charged with anything, but that's really when Doug Jones became, you know, got put on people's radar was in the 2000 trial of these two men concerning the 1960s 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. Okay. And so as a politician, what has he done? As a politician, I haven't been able to find a whole lot that Doug Jones has done for black people. Uh even in looking at some of the things he was saying, his platform is generic. It's a generic as democratic platform. Um, equality, freedom, opportunity, the same things that all Democrats profess. And when you dig down into the details of his values and things of that nature, um, you know, I'm looking at it right now to make sure that I don't misspeak. But... He has something in here about women. He has something in here about children. But I don't see anything in here about black people. Now, I know, and before, because I can already hear black people saying, well, ain't black people women? Ain't uh, black people, you know what I'm saying? Ain't black people children? Aren't black people dealing with discrimination, which he mentions? Um, aren't black people a part of the diversity problems? The reason why I don't attribute black issues to politicians that speak in general terms is because, generally speaking, they aren't speaking about us. They're speaking about other people. So nowadays, when you hear them talking about discrimination, they're talking about Muslims or they're talking about immigrants uh, of some sort. You know what I'm saying? Um, Hispanics. Uh, Muslim immigrants, religious freedoms, prosecutions, and things of that nature. Uh, when they're talking about uh, women's rights, we all know they're not thinking about black women. They're thinking right. about, they're white, talking women. about white women. Right. right. Because, you know, they get big. Well, let's just be real. When they, when they talk about LGBT rights, they say LGBT right. rights. They, they say it. So when they, and when they talk about black rights, when it, when they, they, they right. don't talk about Maybe it. They they talk about it. Yeah, right. They don't <laughs> talk about it. They don't talk about it. So, but but if they talk about a specific group, they'll talk about a specific group. They'll talk about the broad general population. They'll say that. So. Right. And the only thing in here that could even remotely, you could stand on by saying it's for black people is when they talk about voter suppression. But again, voter suppression is a bigger issue than just black people because. Uh, you know, you're also dealing with the, the Hispanic community is dealing with voter suppression issues as well. Republicans don't want anybody coming out but white people. So, you know, right. even on the voter, voter suppression issue, you know, and that's just me looking at his website, you know, and then um, you, you look back at some of the other things that he's talking about. Um, I just don't see anything in here uh, that has to do primarily with what he's done uh, as a U attorney general for black people and on his only real activity even based off his website was the the prosecution of the Ku Klux Klansman back in the 2000s um that's the only activity he has so the rest yeah, of it is pure rhetoric 
So he another Bernie Sanders, huh? He got a, got a little. He did did something a long time ago to make you Negroes happy that y'all was dick to ride with me with. You know, something a little like that, and then you know, don't really have to do nothing as a politician. So. Well, I give him, I give him more, I give him more credit than Bernie. More credit than Bernie. Okay. At least just, he yeah, did yeah. here. At least he did here this century. Yeah, in the 2000s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bernie like, did it back in the sixties when he had no power. Right, like Bernie, right, Bernie, right. Bernie, Bernie was a was a nobody with nothing to lose back then. Right. Yeah, I give I gotta give gotta give him a little more credit than I give Bernie. And then too, Bernie has been a politician a lot longer than 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 um Roy Moore. I actually believe this is not Roy Moore. Um this is yeah. actually um Doug Jones's first political seat. Because before this he was the district uh the US attorney for Alabama. So this is his first time actually having real political power.